AMD's launch dates come into focus. You can have a fish tank gaming PC and Intel, Rex, NVIDIA. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Starting off today with some details about the next generation CPUs from AMD. AMD actually had their Q2 earnings call where they revealed that yes, they are indeed going to be launching Ryzen 7000 this quarter. That is in Q3, which takes place from August all the way through October with Dr. Lisa Su saying, looking ahead, we're on track to launch all our new five nanometer Ryzen 7000 desktop products processors and AM5 platforms later this quarter with leadership performance in gaming and content creation. So it does look like we're on track for all of those details. Also, it looks like AMD is financially on track with them coming out with those earnings reports. Coming out with an announced revenue of $6.6 .6 billion for the second quarter, Dr. Lisa Su saying, we delivered our eighth straight quarter of record revenue based on our strong execution and expanded product portfolio. Each of our segments grew significantly year over year led by higher sales of our data center and embedded products. So they had $6.6 .6 billion in revenue, which is a 70% year on year growth, but that also includes revenue generated by Zillinx, which is a company they acquired recently for about $40 billion. Their gross margin was 46% and their net income was $447 million, which is down from last year. But in that earnings report, AMD wanted to show off their entire gaming product stack and uh, they made sure to do that by uh, barely photoshopping in the Steam Deck. This is a real picture from AMD's presentation and they couldn't even be bothered to find a PNG of the Steam Deck. That is some high quality care AMD put into that bad boy. Also, where's the Tesla? Tesla's got Ryzen Radeon graphics. They should be in here too. Just, I wanna see a, a poorly photoshopped Tesla on the screen right now, Catlin. Thank you. But we also have more details at least coming out in terms of leaks with regards to the release date of the Ryzen 7000 processors. WCCF Tech coming out with a report saying that the announcement will be taking place towards the end of this month on August 29th. Reviews will go live on September 13th and then the final launch date where you can actually acquire these chips will take place on September 15th, which is not too far away from now. This doesn't line up with the previous report where AMD leaked it themselves that we were supposed to get the chip announcement today, that's likely not happening. It was just a typo in a product email that they sent out for their Meet the Experts event. But you don't have to wait too long in case you're interested in Ryzen 7000. You waiting for it? Can you handle waiting just another month and a half for that? Let me know down below in the comments. But in case you've been waiting to stream on your Apple Silicon device, I know Reese has, haven't you, buddy? I didn't discuss this with him beforehand. He probably doesn't have a response. Anyways, OBS Studio Beta now actually has Apple Silicon support in case you wanted to actually run that on your Mac OS. You should be able to do that. This is something that I sent through to Reese immediately as soon as I heard it. And he said that he's been trying to do this with like third party software workarounds and that they don't really work all that well because he's a Mac boy and he's been wanting to stream. And now this will allow him to do it on his Mac mini, hopefully a little bit more. Go give him a follow over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash crossing point. Now you have to stream Reese, deal with it. And you all need to deal with crypto stocks because it's here forever. I hope, no, I, I don't know. Bitcoin down half a percent, $22,838. It was up past 23,000 in the middle of the day and then collapsed. Ethereum down roughly the same to be at 1621 and Dogecoin down 1% to be at 6.6 .6 cents. But Solana also having a tough day because there was a hack that hit some of the hot wallets that were connected to the internet, 8,000 of them being affected by this if they were connected on iOS or Android. Solana just having a vulnerability, Solana coming out and their engineer saying, hey, that we were aware of this and we look like we fixed it. It wasn't with the core code. It was by several software wallets popular by users on the network. So uh, it sucks, man, unregulated crypto goods. How, how do we ever stop this? And how do you stop wasting money on tech products? Well, by following UFD Deals, where we come at you with the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Isn't that right, buddy? Hey friends, Reese here. Welcome back to UFD Deals, where we bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I'm recording this late today because we had no power this morning in sunny South Africa, but the deals stopped for no one, so let's jump in. Today we have the Vizio MQ6 50-inch QLED Smart TV with Dolby Vision, HDR10 support, and a slew of gaming features, including AMD FreeSync. It's currently going for only $298, which is 
$231.99 off. I'm so jealous of the, the TV prices that you guys get in America. In South Africa, we literally paid double for this. You can find this deal and more linked in the video description. And I actually wanna try something. I wanna to respond to Brett, but seeing as he's 8,000 miles away and currently sleeping, uh, let's see if the universe lines up and we actually get a conversation going one day. Let's, let's go with something generic and easy to start with. Hey Brett, what's the weather like in Pittsburgh? Thank you, Reese. But you know what? I'm gonna take all the savings I get from UFD deals and buy this case because it's an aquarium case, the Metal Fish PC case coming out by Metal Fish, uh, which is essentially just what it sounds like. It's, well, it's a little different. There's been other PC cases before where you construct them in a fish tank and then you pour mineral oil. No, no, no. This one is different because it has a a fish tank, a real fish tank on top of the actual PC. So it has a whole bunch of stuff like a pump, a filter, oxygenator, and a light strip that actually is good for the fish. And you stick the PC parts down below. This is a micro ATX build where you can see that you likely can fit a decent GPU in there. This is not the first time Metal Fish has come out with something like this. They've done a mini ITX one in the past, which was their fish cube fish tank chassis. I like this one a little bit better. It does raise a a few questions of like, do, do, do the temperatures in my PC get hotter because the fish tanks on top or does it actually like dissipate through the water better because there's a bigger thermal mass? And then if that is the case, then are the fish going to die because I'm going to heat them up? Or do you get hardy fish who can stand temperature fluctuations to make it so that they're, they're okay? I don't know. These are all the questions that I'm gonna have to figure out because I'm gonna try to get this case to do a PC build in. Whew, I want it. And in case you want Intel's GPUs, ASRock has been announcing the fact that they're coming out with the A380 GPU. They're gonna have that debuting in China. It's, it's at least another third party manufacturer who's actually gonna be coming out with these GPUs. It's good to see, still waiting on them to hit my shores in order for me to enjoy them. But there are a few people who have gotten their hands on them, which they're finding out that uh, some of Intel's spicy sauce is their AV1 encoder. This is coming out from Epos Vox showing that he got his hands on the A380 and put it through its test when it comes to actual hardware encoding, when it comes to game streaming, as well as a few other things, showing off the fact that the AV1 encoder is actually incredibly remarkable. You can get really high quality footage from a lower bit rate and do it better through AV1 encoding on Intel's Arc Alchemist GPUs and even beating out Nvidia's NVENC encoder at the lower bit rate. So at 3,500 kilobits per second, it outpaces the NVENC encoder by a quite considerable amount and beating it all the way up to 8,000 kilobits per kilobytes, kilobits? This is all capitalized. I think it might be kilobits. Anyways, look to be pretty dominant. Intel really putting encoding, decoding on the map. This might be a reason for content creators to pick up these GPUs because you can encode file sizes that are smaller. You can stream in higher quality. It actually might be a really competitive GPU in that regard. Even if Intel's gaming drivers are a little bit buggy. This is something that Intel has been really competitive in for a while, even with their CPUs. So I'm excited to see where this goes. And I hope you're excited to get more hot tech news tomorrow on Friday, because I'll be bringing it to you here on Hot News. See you then.